Dr. Phil Mollica graduated from the University of Medicine and Dentistry in New Jersey in 1983. Prior to dental school, he received a master's degree in human anatomy at Farley Dickinson University. Dr. Mollick is an author, researcher, speaker, and currently on the IMT Board of Directors. Please welcome Dr. Mollick. Rich Fisher asked me, oh, I'll do a breakout. And I said, well, on what? He says, I don't care, do something. So, you know, it's interesting being here at IAOMT. You know, we talk about, you know, wearing spacesuits, vacuum systems, draping, all kinds of, you know, uh, you know uh, suction devices, rubber dam, your mama, your papa in your head, whatever the hell it is, all this external protection for the patient. And what do we wear? Well, sometimes we drape ourselves in kind of like plastic or paper or whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, you find, uh, you know, Joe Palmer down at NASA putting a space suit on, you know, and, uh, and we wear all kinds of masks and stuff. Well, that's great. So we do all this great stuff. Oh, I'm protecting the patient. I'm doing, I'm drilling. Man, our world is aerosol city. That stuff is, I don't give a crap what you do, how cool we are. All this vac, it's spraying all over the damn place. I got news for you. I remember the old video from, I don't know if you've seen it, from dental school, where they put this highlighter of some form, the guy's dental unit, and he does his dentistry all day long, right? And then at night they come in and put the UV light and the whole place is coated with it. Now the reality is, I think for a dental practice in maybe 20, 30 years, maybe some of you guys have been around for 50 years of dentistry. You ever see the guys around here for 50 years of dentistry? <laughs> Anyhow, don't do not last that long, get out. Watch it, Tom. I'm telling you, watch it there. So no matter what we do, we do all wonderful things, more than anybody does in the country, and this is why you're here, to make dentistry as safe as possible, material-wise, all that. We still get this aerosol all over the place, and we're still getting exposed to it. I don't care what the hell you do, okay? So our talks have always been on the external end, you know, mechanical stuff, all that. How do you protect yourself in a biochemical, physiological, anatomical way from the inside out? Because, you know, there's a lot of crazy dentists around, and they're all mercury toxic as hell, and we're trying to keep ourselves as healthy as possible, and health is really based on things functioning at a good homeostatic level. Immune system up and functioning, because you keep the immune system up and functioning as a happy level, longevity comes along and you function at a higher, higher level. So, I kind of kind of started out with the kind of the nurture your gut, nurture your mouth concept, but you know what? I really wanted to talk more about you guys and us. How the hell do you protect yourself every day? Beyond the mechanical stuff. Mechanical stuff is great, we do a great job, but I'm telling you, no matter what we do, it is not perfect. We may profess perfection, but it's far from that, and that's the reality of what we do. So this is really kind of a talk about uh, you guys, per se. So it's kind of like a survival guide for dentists doing dentistry. Now, I just wanted to show all my high technology for you, which I use every day. I learned that from the best. This only uh, is, you know, instead of, you know, eye cats and all that kind of stuff, we just drill holes and drain things out. It's a beautiful, beautiful experience. So this is a survival guide. But why a survival guide? Well, I'm going to give you all the tips that I know from the great guys who really clean us up. And a number of my friends here have been treated by a guy named Thomas Schultz, which is an amazing physician. I mean, we've had a lot of our students go to him and get cleaned up, detoxified, and metals and re organ regeneration, all this wonderful thing. So I'm gonna give you some fundamental tips to protect yourself every day, which you should do, but we're gonna get to that why. Why bother? Well, you know, and your workplace, would you describe it as toxic? I know Bill's practice is toxic as hell, right? You know, Pam, Pam's not. They condemned uh, Joe Palmer's practice, but that's another story itself. So anyhow, it's toxic as hell we were living. I mean, think about the environmentals that we have to deal with every day. Remember dental school, making custom trays? Oh, I love methamethacolate. Well, let's do shots after class, okay? Soaking ourselves in the stuff. And Well, listen, think about what the hell we're doing. I mean, we're dealing with solvents, okay? Solvents. Methamethacrylates, great solvent. 
mercury, aerosols, bacteria, all the creepy things patients bring in, and you're aerostoring a little over the place. I mean, you know, I got a couple little grandkids right now, which are awesome. And they come down to visit the office. I says, wow, put the little kids in a plastic bag, please. Oh, 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 oh little Teddy. No. <laughs> I mean, you no know way. It's creepy out there. So we're dealing, you know, I think we're dealing with aerosols, too. We're breathing this stuff in. Holy crap. Unbelievable. You know, so the reality, I think, you know, we have to think, you know, beyond. We always talk about the physical barriers, those wonderful things we do, which are absolutely important. Just protect the patient, protect you as best as possible. But once again, we go back and think about our ecosystem. The ecology of our bodies. I mean, everyone has a unique ecology, okay? And your longevity and your wellness. Listen, unfortunately, we're all going to croak off one day. Hey, that's the way it goes. So you either want to crawl into the grave or you want to dance into the grave. That's up to you. But you have to think in terms of keeping your ecosystem happy and healthy and clean. Okay, we've seen stagnant ponds out there, but then the rains come and wash everything out. Ah, vitality, life, everything is beautifully balanced, and you are that ultimate ecosystem. And I was lucky to learn from a great mentor of mine, Majid Ali. He was one of the great uh, integrated practitioners early on. And we talked about detoxification, you know, how to clean our body. What do we do? What is the first things we do, you know, to keep our ecosystem healthy? And aging healthily, it all starts in the bowel. Tom knows this. He was with me down at Capitol. When you're talking about detoxification, all this naturopathic stuff, and a number of our students who are, you know, who are naturopaths now are here, we know all the detoxification, everything, starts by cleaning up the gut. Now, if you're not pooping every day, I'm going to have a poop slide. We're going to grade your poop. I don't want any samples, though. Okay? But pooping is critical, and we'll talk about that. So if you're thinking about these systems here, we think about trios of ecosystems. You start detoxification, cleaning up your body and your gut. Fred knows that, right? Get that gut going, and then the higher centers tend to, to re-regulate themselves. Because why is it so important for your bowel to be functioning? Well, we're going to talk about that in detail. But one of the good things is you got to get the toxic waste down. Now, there's different ways for chelation. We know everybody talks about chelation. Oh, DMPS, IVs, and all this kind of stuff. You know, listen, peeing out mercury is like putting razor blades to me through your kidney. I'd rather poop mercury out, okay? Pooping is good. Am I right? Yeah. You know I'm right, okay? And you'll see why. So in a fundamental sense, once we have the bowel functioning, and you'll see why, that's where longevity is, aging healthfully. We're all going to age. That's the way it is. That's the process of oxygen, okay? Once you clean the bowel, the blood starts to function better. The liver can detoxify. You have to nurture and love your liver. That's for sure. These other higher centers tend to fall in place and function at the higher level. If your garbage can gets filled with toxins, eventually it's going to spill over. <laughs> And then what we call disease comes about. And that comes early on before we even see it manifest itself. So let's talk about the gut a little bit. You know, let's get to this gutty matter itself, the gastrointestinal tract, and how important it is. We know where it begins, and we'll show where it ends, that's for sure. But it's involved in ingestion, getting nutrition, all the good, healthy food we love. There's, you know, the Mexican food today was awesome, right? That was great. Guacamole, all those wonderful oils, beautiful. We have to go through the process of digestion where enzymes are folded in. Enzymes are critical, and that's a whole therapeutic unto itself. And we have to get the nutrients in. You know, we can eat all the things we want, get all this healthy food that's wonderful, and if you have diarrhea on the other end, you're not going to be able to absorb it. You have to get it in. It's kind of a very unique way how we absorb our nutrients, and we're going to talk about that. And, of course, gut health, good microflora. Something about the gut which is very interesting, it's a zoo down there. Okay, there's all kinds of bugs. But, once again, like I spoke yesterday, remember, 90% of us is what? The bugs. And 10% is the flesh. So we have an intimate relation, symbiotic relationship with our microflora. And that microflora reflects 
your ecosystem. Okay, what you eat, what you drink, everything else, that's what you're gonna grow. And that growing thing is all unique. And those are absolutely critical. The problems we're having sometimes today is a lot of the ancient bacteria that we evolved with, we have destroyed. And a lot of times there's an incredible intimate relationship between that microflora. It could be a small little population of a certain type of bacteria that produces a certain little enzyme, protein, that really creates a vast amount of other type of bacteria to support their health and wellness. So by losing a lot of these ancient type of bacteria, our flora tends to change. Where the hell did all this you know, tension deficit come from? All these problems that we're seeing, where, where the hell did this all come from? Is it just the food? Is it the mercury, the vaccines? Or have we somehow changed the microflora, which produces a tremendous amount of different type of hormones, neurotransmitters, that we're losing or we're getting bad information. What is going on is it an ecological issue that we just don't know. So the gut is critically important. But one of the most important things that we see over time as we mature in life, if we can mature, guys never mature, remember that, but I'm talking about maturity physically, is our immune system tends to wane at times. And that waning has been shown scientifically, scientifically, is that the microflora changes or becomes more dysbiotic, our immune system tends to wane. Why the hell would that happen? What, the, what does the immune system have to do with the gut and the microflora? Everything. So where does the gut begin? Well, this is when you're eating organic, cage-free, Free range, I'm totally eating this food, I'm telling you, I feel the energy in the food, it feels good. And then they eat it with this. You ever get the, you get, so I, just, I think I touched on it yesterday a little bit. I get all these holistic moms come in, thank God my wife sees them all. They come in and this and that, and you know, I won't touch anything, it's not organic. I test it energetically. And then they have root tips all over their damn mouth. <laughs> what the hell is that? Whoops. Whoops, that's where it ends. So anyhow, infections and all this kind of stuff. So we're taking this beautiful, beautiful cage free, free range, grass fed, whatever the hell it is, food and put it in a toxic waste dump. But the most important thing is this is where dentists have an incredible opportunity to take because we're thinking differently, we're thinking biologically. Once again, if you have an oral cavity that is toxic like this, heavy metals, infection, acid-producing problems, infection all over the place, it really starts affecting digestion right from the beginning. My dear friend Tom Levy spoke about it today. Those damn tonsils are infected like hell all the time. But more importantly, what happens, digestion begins right in the oral cavity. And remember, the digestion, what does that mean? When the spit starts flowing. Oh, oh saliva, it's coming out. Well, what's coming out with those, the saliva is what? enzymes and remember enzymes are what ph dependent and temperature dependent so you have enzyme systems that are going to start breaking down what sugars and fats in the oral cavity now you're breaking those down from that point on and you have to chew 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 that's the thing to do so anyhow where does the gut begin right here so our great job is to make a beautiful temple of food entry coming into the mouth itself and of course, we know where it ends, that's for sure. And this is the critical part, where it ends and how it comes out. Because if it doesn't come out for a week or two, you got some problems right there. Now our practice is right outside Manhattan, so we get some of the Holly weirds that come out. You know, them Broadway people, them dancers, and one of the questions we always ask our, our patients, and they're kind of like, what the hell? I says, uh, okay, you know, you do this, this, and this, wonderful. You look trim, beautiful. And this. Um, how often do you, you, you take a poop? That's after we ask them how much water they drink. Coffee, thank you. Anyhow, how often do you poop a day? Where the hell, is this a dental? Oil? What the hell? Where am I? Oh, uh, about once a week. 
once a week, oh, I'm constipation, I got diarrhea, constipation, I get colds, I got flus all the time, I had headaches. Are we on tape? Yeah, we are. Hey man, you're full of shit. <laughs> oh my God. You gotta, you know, you're gonna see this again. You gotta poop good to look good. That's one of our mantras. You gotta poop good to look good. Don't I look good? I know Bill looks good. Tommy looks good. Well, my pals out here look good. So, you gotta take a crap every day, once or twice. If you're not, you better start working on that gut, especially in the environment that we live in. Why? Well, let's talk about that. This is uh, Bob Harris when I first met him. <laughs> oh, Bob, I'm sorry, you're in here, in the back. Oh my God. Another, another level of what we're talking about. You ever get that, oh, that gut feeling? That gut instinct? Oh man, this just ain't right. You know why you get that gut instinct? Because there's a whole brain down there. It's called the enteric nervous system. We'll touch on that a little bit more in detail. It takes an entire brain to manage your gut. That's amazing. As much nerves as the entire spinal column is down there thinking. Now, if you have a brain down there thinking and it's kind of funky, poops laying around for a week or so, you're gonna get a little retarded brain going here. It's not gonna think right. And you're not gonna absorb things correctly or get rid of things correctly, okay? So, anyhow, so the, you know, the organization, the gastrointestinal tract, I know you guys think about this all the time. Of course, it's a series of hollow organs. It's a big old tube. We know, once again, we know where it starts. It starts in the mouth, ends in at the anus, okay? And of course, it's associated with several accessory glands. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, you have you know the gallbladder, the pancreas, different enzyme systems pouring in there, and that's the environment changes, okay? Accessory glands to help with that digestive process, okay? And each of these, you know, of the areas, these hollow organs are very specialized. They do different things in different environments. We're going from different kind of ecosystems as we go through, as we go through that beautiful digestive absorptive process itself. And everything is separated by sphincters. Do you ever think about the anal sphincter? How awesome it is? Think about it. You know, especially I've been in Boy Scouts for close to 60 years. And of course on a good you know, Boy Scout camping adventure, you sit around the campfire and everybody has to let gas go. And who's ever the best at it wins. But think about that little sphincter. How does it control that versus you crap it in your pants? <laughs> and I know some of you still do anyhow. They won't admit to it. But it's pretty amazing. Okay, the innate intelligence of your gut. I am losing it, Tom. Help me. Help me. It's Friday. It's, it must be Friday, is it? Or Saturday? I don't know. Whatever the hell it is. Anyhow, so these organs are separated by sphincters that are highly controlled in an intelligent way. And it's really, really important that these areas are separated because they serve different functions in a highly different ecologies and purpose. So, once again, we start at the mouth and we see the pH should be what? It says 5 here, but, you know, it really should be close to 7. 6.8 to 7, because that's when those enzymes are going to act as an optimal way, okay? And, you know, the transit time, you know, 10 seconds. I mean, in New Jersey, people just swallow as they're talking. They don't, you know, they don't chew their food, okay? And once again, now, if you're thinking about it, coming from a healthy mouth, ah, oh, pH is beautiful. We're chewing, 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 squishing everything up, getting those enzymes in there, saliva, greasing that food up, slide it down the esophagus, and it goes from a more alkaline environment to a dramatic what? Acidic environment, okay? So an empty stomach, I mean, it has a pH of about like one, maybe two. Man, that will burn the hell out of you. But in God's nature, the stomach is coated with mucin and all kinds of cool stuff to protect that tissue from being destroyed by those crazy acids and enzyme systems in there. But it also is when you go from one dramatic pH to another, it is also a protective mechanism. Little Mr. E. coli hops on your piece of food. Now he's in an alkaline environment. And all of a sudden, boom, he's in acid world. Okay, so it's another level of protection. And what's, what do we do? Why is the stomach so acidy? 
what's the purpose of our stomach other than squish things up and making kind of goopy and all that kind of stuff the pH is dropping down because this is how you break down what proteins proteins so oh I got heartburn man I think I'm gonna take some Pepsi I'm gonna do this holy crap literally you're popping up the pH you're neutralizing the acid how the hell are you gonna digest your proteins and the only way you probably digest your proteins is if they're being broken down to the smallest component, meaning amino acids, okay, and monopeptides, and maybe a dipeptide, okay, too little protein. If it's any larger and it's absorbed into your intestine, it's, it becomes presented as an antigen. You'll get an allergy, an allergic response to it. Okay, the body's smart, okay? Digestion, the process of taking sugars, fats, proteins, and break them down to the smallest components possible. Why? Why can't we just absorb a big old T-bone in there? Because we can. We'll see why. Okay? So once again, it travels through the stomach. It hangs out there for a while, depending how your stomach is working, your acid's working. And you know, the interesting thing, you want a simple lot of cure for heartburn? The problem with heartburn is this. There's a sphincter at the top of the stomach. Okay? It is pH dependent. When the food drops down, of course you're going to elevate the pH. It's just a natural thing. Now you're not going to eat too many things at a pH of one and survive. Okay? pH you know, elevates up. The triggers go on and the nervous system kicks in. Ah, we have food in here. I have to start producing a hydrochloric acid. I have to start producing gastrin, pepsinogen, all these kind of cool things. But as the pH starts to drop back down, the sphincter gets tighter and tighter and tighter. But unfortunately, over time, as the maturity issue comes back into play, a lot of times we're not producing as much acid. You know what the simplest fix, and we've learned this years ago, have the patient add a little acid to their system. Nine times out of ten, I think that will fix you know, acid reflux. It's the lack of acid that creates this agita. Okay, not too much. The problem is the sphincter doesn't close, and if it's pH dependent, based on how the pH drops, okay, it's something called betaine you can buy at a health food store, or you can buy capsules of HEL. And you know what? Have the patient try that. Take a couple before, or start out with one before a meal, and see how they do. They feel a little better. Take two until the symptoms are gone. It's a simple fix. You know what the worst case scenario is? It doesn't work. That's the beauty of a lot of these simple, you know, remedies is that there's no downside. Worst case scenario, go back to your Prilosec and don't digest your protein. But simple things like lack of acid produces more heartburn than anything. And when you're treating these heartburn issues, we're going after the symptomology, not the cause. And this is where functional integrative concepts come in. Why the hell is this happening? What's the fix for this patient? Not the band-aid. Let's fix the symptom. No, let's fix the cause. Let's get to the root cause, thinking biologically, what the hell's going on to fix this and help the patient themselves. So once again, we go from that stomach, really acid, it makes a particle small, and it dumps into the small intestine. And this is where bile comes in, starts to emulsify those fats so we can absorb the fats. The pancreas kicks in, starts dumping, you know, salts in there, et cetera, to kind of, kind of once again, to elevate that pH. So we're going back into an alkaline environment, okay, and start breaking down sugars and stuff like that again, okay? So we're going from alkaline to acid to alkaline, and then eventually we get to the Lazy River, the old, old Mississippi, the colon itself where that sucks the water out, okay? This is where constipation comes in and gets those electrolytes, electrolytes out of the system itself. So what we want to do is in life, and especially in dentistry itself, or anyone, we want to nurture our gut. We love the guts. We love it, we want to take care of it, and how do we do that? So once again, I mean, the excretion removal weights, you know, want to move fecal matter, you know, non-digested, non-absorbed dietary products, a lot of bacteria, a lot of your poop is bacterial based, metabolic byproducts. And this is a great way you get rid of heavy metals, drugs, pesticides, all the toxic stuff. It's great to poop it out. But sometimes, and a lot of times, you need help helping your body with what it needs to help those things, those excretory products, get the hell out of the system before it starts affecting you on multiple, multiple levels. So once again, 
if we all want to say this together, you have to poop good to look good. Right, Maddie? I know you're out there somewhere. Okay. And I see a lot of good looking people here, by the way. So here's your poop measurement device. And I hope every day after you do your morning ritual, you're reading your book, and you have to have books in every, like in my house, I have different books in different bathrooms. I eventually work my way through. Well, the little sausage one's semi-moving here from this, uh, I guess, there here. But anyhow, so, you know, you take a look at your crap. And it's a look. It's just a blob sitting there. The reality is it should be pretty much well-formed, sausage-shaped, smooth, and soft. Not hard. You shouldn't be sitting there, oh, my God. We used to do this at school, going to the stall. Oh, my God, this is killing me. They get the whole bathroom upset. I know Tom used to do that all the time. So evaluate. I mean, if you're going from constipation to watery back and forth, you have a dysbiotic bowel. And it's not that complex to fix. So look at your poop. Make sure it's well-shaped, not look like some aliens crawling around there, and make sure there's no worms in there. You do get worms. Remember a friend of mine, you know, was babysitting a dog. Oh, the dog loves to sleep in the bed with everybody. Except it had roundworms. He got roundworms. Think about crap and spaghetti. Oh, oh my God. That's on video, right? Oh, here I go again. Oh, God. I'm in trouble. I'll never be invited back. Anyhow, those teeth are supposed to move, but it's not on my computer. So, anyhow, the, the, the mantra here is the first thing is that chew, chew, chew. That's the thing to do. So always reinforce chewing. And it's always the most complex thing. Because I don't know about you, we're working in the office, and you try, oh, I'm going to get a lunch hour in dentistry? If you don't get a couple hour break, you can never get away from the damn patients. So what do you do? Oh, that, oh, that, that crown's milling. I'm back. Ooh, I hope I don't smell like garlic going back on there. And you go back. And am I chewing any kind of food? I don't know. You're like gulping it down. Okay? But chewing this part to start breaking things down to its smallest, smallest product itself. And once again, the oral cavity, the pH is critical. You know, it's an alkaline environment. We have lipase, amylase, and once again, those enzyme systems, which you can supplement, which I'll talk about at the end, you know, are pH dependent. If you're chronically infected, periodontal diseases and all that is gonna dramatically affect the pH and how your digestion starts. And the importance of tonsils are critical. You know, Tom Levy, a good pal of mine, talked about infected tonsils today. And, you know, traditionally we cut tonsils out. You know, Dr. Kids here, neurotherapy on tonsils, awesome or what? Okay, we use ozone on tonsils or what? Amazing. Clean them up, reintegrate them back into the system. Why well, I added tonsils, what the hell did they do? Well, if you look at the anatomy and study the physiology of things, this is the first line to gold. Your tonsils are already talking to your, your gut immune system already. Gut-associated lymphoid tissues, direct connection to tonsils. So as you're chewing your food, absorbing it, your tonsils are thinking, sending information down to your gut to prepare for what's coming. So if we cut that out, we're not doing ourselves any favors whatsoever. So we can preserve those tonsils. We love to do that. And that's what we do. We used to do a lot of neurotherapy, drainage remedies, but ozone is awesome for tonsils. Awesome for tonsils. We so inject a little bit of ozone on each tonsil there, and man, within a day or two, boo, it's amazing what kind of aliens crawl out of your tonsils. Anybody ever see tonsil stones? Ooh. <laughs> okay. What are tonsils stones? Of? Made calcium. What's that? It's a chronic inflammation infection of what? The tonsils. That's why you're making these stones. Inject it, treat it neurotherapeutic-wise. We have the ultimate expert in neurotherapy who's gonna talk. Amazing. Fix those tonsils. I'm telling you, it means a significant. Don't cut them out if you can. Sometimes, you know what, you got to. And listen, even if you treat them, there's all the tonsils are out. Most times they're not, by the way. They just debulk them and leave them in the pharyngeal wall. If you look at the anatomy of tonsils, they're buried into the pharyngeal wall. You know, if they're really gonna take the tonsils, they're gonna have to dissect your head. And that hurts. That hurts. Okay. 
So anyhow, so the esophagus, of course, is the conduit of uh, you know food going down to the stomach itself. And it's a lot, once again, if that sphincter itself, the cardiac sphincter, doesn't close, which is pH dependent, you kind of get that constant flux. And this is where you're seeing people get esophageal cancers, chronic problems with digestion, and it really starts there. So think a little bit differently. And these are just suggestions. We keep HCL in the office and betaine. And patients come in, oh, I got heartburn and this and that. And I give this stuff. I said, just try this. And I tell them how to do it. You know what, if it works, they usually come in, hallelujah. You know, I don't have any more heartburn. Add a little acid into the system. Once again, worst case scenario, it doesn't work. No, you no know, loss, no pain, no problem at all. And it always amazed me, you know, when I was in anatomy school, we did a lot of histology. Learned how to make slides and all that kind of stuff and all kinds of research, which was a lot of fun. But, you know, if you start going back to your basic sciences, you start looking at how the body is made up from the cellular level on up. And it's incredible. I mean, even the stomach, the small intestine, you have our lovely epithelial cell. Now, epithelial cells come in multiplicity of different forms. They go from a form that they're just like nothing, like a stem cell per se, and they evolve into different things. Oxinic cells producing pepsinogen, chief cells, acids, etc. So, you know, stem regenerative mucus cells, all these amazing things. It's incredible intelligence in there, and they all serve a different function. And the epithelial cell, unfortunately, doesn't last that long, but it does have a purpose, okay? Believe it or not, part of our digestion and our protective mechanisms, we actually redigest a lot of the epithelial cells that are sloughed off the small intestine. A large amount of our protein comes from our self. And it might gross you out, but it's the truth. So it's a beautiful, beautiful anatomic histological world we deal with. And once again, I talked about this, you know, too much acid or not enough. And it's really that sphincter right here that is, once again, totally pH dependent. Try it. If it doesn't work, hey, no loss whatsoever itself. So the small intestine is amazing. Now, if we go back to embryology, and all I know you all remember embryology, Remember, the GI tract, the gut, once again, I talked about this even yesterday, I mentioned this, is an external organ housed inside. Okay, so like I said yesterday, you don't want to drag your guts around. Invagination, and this whole thing is an amazing process, but this is how we also perceive the world in a different way. We're challenged antigenically every few minutes or five, 10 minutes. We're stuck in the subterranean world. It might be every three minutes, okay? But it's an external organ that's housed inside. It's a different level of perception of the world. We think the perception of the world is our consciousness. We, we see things, we hear, we touch, we feel, we walk around, beautiful thing. But in a deeper sense, your GI tract is constantly constantly probing the outside world. Why do we swallow? Anybody know why we swallow? This is how you're snipping the world. I'm swallowing the world so the body can decide what the hell to do with it and where you are. Okay? I'm not making my myofunctional self better. No, I'm snipping the world. Right, Dr. Green? He's snipping back there. So that little snip in the air, being in, it's being processed, going past your tonsils, your tonsils, and hmm, what the hell is that all about? And it's being passed down that information so you can process it. So the immune system knows whether to respond or not. The immune system should know to respond or not. It's an antigenic challenge or isn't. Should we gear up and get ready for a challenge? Or well, we can hang out and worry about absorbing food. So, of course, the absorption of nutrients in this beautiful eight-foot-long tube and it has convolutions, little villi, you know, that has this brush border. And it's amazing the surface area of this absorptive also of the organ, organ part. It's the size of a tennis court. If you laid out the small intestine, all the grooves, all the villi, all that brush border, everything in that eight feet, it's the size of a tennis court. And you shoved it in your guts. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
Well, that's a beautiful thing. That's just, you know, we get all this, you know, 2,000 cubic centimeters squared. But no playing tennis with your guts, please. But it boils down to this. This is that villi. Another incredible structure. This is how we absorb things. You have to realize that for us to absorb those amino acids, those simple little sugars, those little fats, etc., everything must travel through this epithelial cell. It has to be brought in here. There's enzyme systems. There's protective mechanisms in here. There's bacteria lining here. So everything has to be transported through an epithelial cell right into this, what's called this lacteal area here and brought into the system itself. That's pretty damn amazing. So we have a dysfunctional gut. The epithelium are not happy. You're not going to get your damn nutrients into the system itself. Well, that's kind of cool, that mucosal surface layer itself. And once again, the barrier between the outside world and your inside world is one cell thick, one epithelial cell. That's the difference between the outside world and the inside world. Well, you think it's all oh, the skin, oh yeah, yeah. No, it's your guts. And that epithelium is one cell thick. If that breaks down, and it does, you open yourself up to what? Pathogenic, antigenic challenges. And this week from a dysbiotic gut. One cell. So we have to love our epithelium. So here's the epithelial cell. How awesome is this thing? Let's see our let the let the moon rise. Oh, here we go. Okay. And I learned this from a friend of mine, Christopher Plummer, at Farmex years ago. But it's amazing that the relationship in the small intestine, you have this beautiful microflora down there. You have this intimate relation of this bacteria that's attached to this microvilli border, okay? And these acid, these bacteria help with digestion. They make uh, vitamins they help break down those components to the smallest part so it can be transported through the epithelial cell think about it. it has to be transported in this mechanism through this epithelial cell and presented holy cow we blew the whole instrument up here let's try that again oh here we're back I think I hit the wrong button I think the full moon just came in so anyhow so those nutrients have to be passed through that epithelial cell presented to that basement membrane then transported through the system, through the liver, and through the typical processes associated with that. So, things we have to nurture when we talk about our GI tract is keeping the epithelium nice and happy. Everybody heard about leaky gut syndrome, okay? Leaky gut, that's when the epithelial cells start to separate, and once they start to separate, things can crawl in. And remember, for a pathogen to take hold of something on you, it must attach to you. It can't be just passing along, it has to attach. And this is where those bacteria, those probiotics, attach to the epithelium. To this beautiful glycocalyx mechanism, they hook on. And this is why we take lactobacillus acidophilus. There's a little micro niche of acid right at the epithelial cell level that protects it from invasion. It's all multiple levels of protection that we really don't have time to get into. But just want you to think about that one epithelial cell layer that does all those amazing things. And those poor guys, they don't last too long. We saw that little villi, it's like a little finger dipped in chocolate here. Their stem cells are at the base and they're constantly migrating up that little finger and eventually slough off while doing all their work. But that's another protective mechanism. As they slough off, if there's any pathogen that attaches to them, or put back and flow down the river, okay? So the transport of nutrients through the intestinal epithelium, apical, you know, membrane specialized for absorption, the brush and border microvilli, and it's transported through the, you know, through the epithelium itself. The small intestine epithelial cells calls an enterocyte. The large intestine colonocyte. But once again, you can see where I said, how the hell do I get a tennis court in my gut? Okay. Once again, you see those villi in the, in the small intestine, the convolutions. But even at the this specialized epithelial cell has these microvilli for absorption itself. So you can see how this is amazing on the absorptive end. 
if they're happy and they're healthy. That's the key. Well, okay. Well, we want to get nutrients in. That's kind of cool itself. And once again, you know, when we get to this chemical digestion via what? The acid we produce in the stomach, the enzyme systems, etc. You know, we want to once again convert our fats, carbohydrates, and proteins down to the smallest components. Once again, proteins, amino acids, dipeptides, tripeptides are kind of borderline, okay? Went the carbohydrates on the monosaccharides, and of course the lipids through emulsification, through down triglycerides themselves in a healthy, balanced way. But our deeper sense of awareness comes on two levels. One, we talk about autonomic nervous system. There's a number of them. We always think about parasympathetic, sympathetic, absolutely. But here in the gut, we think about the second brain, enteric nervous system itself. And we talked about a little bit, we talked about the extracellular matrix, which has a kind of its own brain. It's totally autonomic as these are. These are thinking mechanisms we cannot possibly keep up with, but amazing that they're going on. But why I put this histology into, into view is really very important. The one thing that we see once we can leave the mouth, once we leave the stomach and tries to transfer into the small intestine, very interesting things start to occur. And that's the immune system. The GI tract is lined with nest and beautiful areas of immune cells. The immune cells are laid right up against the intestinal walls. And this is where that perception comes from that we don't think about. If you have a healthy gut, you can have a healthy immune system. We go from the stomach area, you can see the villi, and as soon as we start to pass into the small intestine, we start to start see these pyrus patches here. These are nesting educational areas for the immune system. We go further down into the small intestine, we can see where those villi are much longer for all that absorption but what's important right up against that beautiful little tube is what? Immune cells. They're being educated. They're being on alert. The immune system, if it is healthy in a GI tract, is at an always an low grade level of inflammation. You say, oh my God, inflammation. No, this is physiological healthy inflammation, meaning they're upregulated. When they become lazy and toxic because you have a dysfunctional or dysbiotic bowel, this is when your damn immune system starts to wane away. This is when we get to naturopathy and to natural medicines, you always start in the gut. Because without your immune system functioning at a full potential, you're susceptible to all kinds of horrible things beyond colds, you're, you're susceptible to cancers taking threshold, chronic diseases, we're seeing all the crazy chronic diseases today, they all have gut problems. And where I've seen the great successes with my friends that are wonderful physicians, everything starts cleaning up in the gut. And this is why, this is critical. Huge immunity at that level. You see these large nesting areas of immune cells at all different levels of maturity. You nurture your gut, you nurture your immune system, you nurture your longevity. Once again, we get further in here, down the gut itself, down to the ileum area, and once again, we're seeing all these amazing immune areas right up against the gut wall, perceiving the world. Remember, we never thought about it. This is an external organ housed inside. And we're perceiving the world through the immune system. There's another level of consciousness here that's going on to protect you. Protect you. We have these beautiful areas, pyres, patches, all these beautiful things they want to call them, of these immune cells, but also they have scouts out there. And we have immune cells, lymphocytes, out in the villi. They're probing out there. And what they're probing is an attack 
or some kind of energetic challenge or some toxic coming in. And what they do is they perceive it because they're right on the front line and they start producing cytokines and sending information down through the matrix area all the way down into those nest areas and you hopefully you get the proper regulated immune response. All these allergies are stupidity. I have allergies to this, I have allergies to that. Well, that's a stupid immune system. You have to re-educate the immune system to act in a balanced fashion. So once again, you go down to the, the, the gut itself. Uh, studies have shown different areas absorb different things at different rates. Okay, that's pretty cool. Once again, trying to get this stuff in itself. And once again, this large intestine, here we go. It really absorbs fluids and electrolytes. This is the problem. Now, if you're not taking a crap every day, your large intestine say, well, you know what? I'm going to keep pulling more water out. I'm pulling more water out. All of a sudden, you got a brick in your butt. Trying to crap a brick. You know what I mean, Tom? He knows what I'm talking about. So there's always ways to, you know, build up bulk, you know, you know, have an extra, you know, brand muffin a day with extra sugar. That always works. A little silly husk. But anyway, you've got to get the crap out of you, okay? That's why it lingers around too much. That's it. And colonics are awesome. Anybody do colonics here? Yeah, now you're talking. That's it. Flush it out, man. But once again, we go down. You can see the histological changes that occur because of different functionality of this part of the gut. And you can see here, look at, look at this nest of immune cells right up against the wall here. It's still looking for antigenic challenges or toxic challenges. So your immune system is being educated. So think about it. If you've got a toxic gut, you think that immune system is going to function correctly? Hell no. It's going to be poisoned. Do all kinds of stupid things and food allergies and this allergy and that allergy. Okay? I'm gluten sensitive. Well, you have a gluten sensitive gut. Clean up the gut and those things tend to go away. Okay? Once again, we can go back to simple, the simple anatomy. You have anterior, what's called endocrine cells. Once again, information. I spoke about this a little bit yesterday, but the most important energy or anything you can give to a biologic system like our body is coherent, clear information. If your body's not talking to itself, all kinds of weird things are going to happen. The pituitary, pineal gland, you know, thyroid, you know, adrenal glands. My adrenal glands are exhausted, I know it, okay? Well, they're not talking properly. So we can supplement that and give those things back in balance. So your body has to coherently talk to itself. Good information, things will function right. When you get bad information in a toxic oncology environment, weird things are going to happen. You're going to start growing a third horn or a third eye or something, okay? You don't want to do that, okay? And of course, hey, man, the gut's got to eat too. Our epithelial cells love to eat. They love it. I love butter. I love eggs. Good oil. Skinny oil. Any skinny oil people here? Oh, yeah, yeah, we know that. Fermented foods are always good. Get some good bacteria in there. But, you know, the, you know, the epithelium loves what's called short-chain fatty acids. What the hell is short-chain fatty acids? Well, this is where your bacteria come into play, okay? Your GI tract has, you know, it's the only tissue that has a couple of sources of nutrition from the blood. Okay, that's great. But from the luminal tract, you know, the bacteria in your gut is what makes the food for the gut. The bacteria take our food, formulate, ferment it, break it down, and make those short-chain fatty acids that takes care of the epithelium of this large and small intestine itself. And, you know, there's things like butyrate, etc. So, once again, on the host metabolism, starch and non-starch polysaccharides are fermented by the bacterial enzymes. And this is where we have no enzymes ourselves to produce short-chain fatty acids. And this is why we nurture the gut with probiotics. Take the probiotics every day. Weed, feed, and seed the GI tract. Weed, feed, and seed. Because these are the bacteria that are producing those short-chain fatty acids, like acetate, butyrate, propionic, that feed the epithelium. If you have a leaky gut, one of the first things most alternative practitioners, complementary practitioners, should put you on is something called butyrate. Butyrate's an incredible short-chain fatty acid you can get in a capsule. And it really pumps up this like incredible food 
for the epithelium lining in your gut, especially the large intestine. You can get this at any health food store. Betaine, the acid, get rid of heartburn, butyrate, feed the epithelium, okay? But ultimately, you have to have a good ecology in the gut, and it boils down to the microbiome that lives in there. So weeding, feeding, and seeding that gut, reseed that gut. And once again, you can see an inflamed gut. I tell you, you get a stomach ache. Whew, is that the worst or what? I was talking to a pal of mine. It's like getting seasick. Anybody ever get seasick? Whew, man, until you get off the boat, you're dying. I think your microflora just plunges into the sea. That's for sure. But, you know, as the ecology changes, it becomes more toxic. This is where you get that leaky gut. What a leaky gut? Very simple. The epithelium starts to break down. It's starved or toxic. The, the conjunctions junctions of the epithelium start to break apart, and you're susceptible for poop and whatever the hell's in there to leak down. And you're going to get a really immune response out of that. Remember, epithelial cells are protecting it. That one cell layer is coated along that entire intestine. Epithelials love each other. They hug, they're attached, they're real tight. If their pal's not feeling well, they'll feed a little stuff off to them, and we'll help you out a little bit. But once they're starved, they're not feeling well, they're toxic, they're invaded, those connections will break away, and they were open, we are truly open now, to the environment itself, and what lays in that tube itself. But the brain, the brain, you know, I always think about these poor people that uh, have gut surgery. I don't think there's anything worse than that. I have friends of mine that had all kinds of gut surgery, and you're just never right. All this bariatric surgery, move, cutting the, the stomach in half. I mean, how the hell are you digesting protein? And you're screwing the brain up. These people can't digest after these gut surgeries properly for years, if ever, because you wind up damaging the damn brain. This enteric nervous system is just like the ultimate spider web. It's this veil that just encompasses in and around the guts itself. It's constantly thinking, regulating, moving things, absorbing things, probing and understanding what's going on in your environment and control. We can't possibly think of the millions of things that are going on in the gut itself, but the enteric nervous system does that. And it's amazing. It's amazing. It really, you know, combined, once again, it's autonomic. It speaks to the higher centers, it speaks to his pal, the parasympathetic, the sympathetic gang, it speaks to the central nervous system, everything's talking to each other. But the point here, simplicity is really, it's totally inundated in around the gut itself. And we can see here these incredible slides that can so, just these fine, beautiful filaments in and around the epithelial cells, the villi, throughout the entire gut itself. And it really controls that function of that gut. So once again, we go into an ecology that becomes more toxic, things start to dysregulate, the cells aren't well, the nervous system starts to flop out, you're not absorbing your nutrition, you're getting, getting all these weird allergies going on, you can't digest your food, you're constipated, well, hell's breaking loose. Except what should break loose is your poop. Okay? So this is why it's so critical when you're thinking about, I'm going to detoxify myself, I'm going to clean myself up, you have to carefully start in the GI tract. Once again, just a simple diagram showing the intimate relationship of this nervous net in and around the gut itself. Highly regulated, highly intelligent, and it has its own brain. So, and here's these wonderful diagrams. It's amazing how they do that, of the nervous system in and around the gut itself. So you can see the intimate relationship. There are no separations of things in the human body. Remember, I said this yesterday, where but one thing, it all works together. You accept, one thing affects you, it affects everything. You stick on the needle in somebody's face, they feel it in their toe. And we know this if you're doing TMD, all this orthopedic stuff, you start shifting the jaw, the neck's gonna appropriate, everything's gonna twist and turn all around, hopefully for the better, but that remains to be seen. So we are but one, okay? And a happy gut, means the production of serotonin, which is the bacteria producing down there. The nervous system produces it, central nervous system, but also the gut. The mood, you know, your social behavior. I mean, everybody's happy here, because I can tell your serotonin levels are beautiful. Beautiful. Appetite and digestion's great, sleep, memory. Are we in Vegas? Where are we? That's why I remember now. 
sexual desire and function. You know what I mean, Roger? Yeah, yeah. I guess not. I know Pierre knows, that's for sure. So we're now 80, 90% of uh, serotonin is produced in the gut. So if your gut is happy, you're happy. Your gut's not happy, you're gonna be cranky. My gut's bothering me, I got a stomach, leave me the hell alone. I'm not doing that filling today, I'll rip that damn tooth out of their head. Son of a bitch, impatience, I swear I'll kill him. So anyhow, once again, we see serotonin up in the central nervous system, and actually platelets produce uh, serotonin also, other than growth factors and all that. So you can see, oh, again, this is, I'm just skimming the surface on this. Okay, so that's great. We toured the gut. We're happy. The gut's happy. We're all going to go take a crap later on today and feel good about it. Remember, take a look. And you go, oh, my God. Some of that Texas beef, I'm telling you, watch it. Anyhow, so let's get to the guts of matter. So how do you protect yourself? Because once again, we're exposed constantly to this horrible environment, this crazy dental environment. We're putting, like I said, all these drapes all over ourselves. I'm perfectly safe. And you're breathing all this crap in. So how do you protect yourself every day? And I'll give you a list of things that you can do. Hopefully it's on uh, the website or whatever. But these are some simple things. To do. I list a bunch of stuff. If you did half of them, you'd be great. These are the key elements. Of how do you protect yourself from the inside out? Every day you can walk into the damn dental office. You should be taking chlorella, amino NAC. Why NAC? N-acetylcysteine. Sulfury as hell. All that mercury will be picked up by sulfur. Okay. And listen, this is a protocol, three times a day you can do that. And then work it back to two. So it's something regime you should do all the time to build and nurture your gut. Build and nurture your gut. Sometimes it seems like a pain in the ass. I was talking to my dear friends before, we have these little baskets of stuff we're doing. I was like, God, I feel like a senior citizen walking around with my little nutrients here. But I tell you what, I'm still in a psychotic, toxic environment. I gotta nurture and take, protect myself, not from the outside, but from the inside out. So anyhow, so of course, bromelain papin is really a digestive aid. Remember, enzymes, you know, at our school we spend a whole bunch of time on enzymes because enzyme therapies are absolutely amazing. It's beautiful anti-inflammatories if taken away from food, but enzymes are wonderful as a digestive aid also. So simple thing like bromelain uh, papain from c raw is wonderful, simple little enzyme for digestion. Modelfin, which is a brown seaweed, once again, a wonderful nutrient trace mineral product. This is absolutely amazing, brown, beautiful seaweed, okay? We actually have at our school a seaweed expert that comes in and talks about it. But this is wonderful seaweed. This is, once again, helping nurturing the gut itself. Of course, take your, your, your vitamin. Don't go get, you know, one a day's, please. Oh my God, they're all filled with fillers and stuff. Sea Royal, once again, makes a wonderful multivitamin. And once again, if you're taking multiple, multiple vitamins, okay, these are supplements, they're not herbals or homeopathics per se, okay? Change it around once in a while. Don't say to take the same damn vitamin forever. And when you're taking supplements, every, you know, every four or five weeks, give yourself a few days off. Let your body work a little bit. Get some of the junk out of there. Let it recycle, okay? Change it around a little bit. And this, I would highly recommend from a dear friend of mine, Innovative Medicine, Natovim, the most amazing brain rebuilder product I have ever seen. It's made at NADH. It starts to restructure, rebuild the telomeres on top of your brain. It's the best brain supplement I've ever seen to restructure yourself. Natovim, very, very good product. And of course, fish oil caps, you know, that type of stuff for anti-inflammatory. Okay, so that's just some fundamental things. You can take a couple or all, whatever. You can become one of those uh, vitamin people. You have the greatest fertilizer on earth, okay? But this is the one element that you really have to take care of yourself with, is trace minerals. Our body is pretty damn smart, okay? Pretty smart. But it's when it needs something, it's going to take it no matter where the hell it is. And if you look at the periodic table, you see all those wonderful nutrients we, we take in, those minerals and stuff, are surrounded by psychotic poisons. So we're exposed to those psychotic poisons all the time. Now, if your body doesn't have, for example, the magnesium or molybdenum, et cetera, it's going to, you know, start dumping mercury or something else or nickel or something in. It's going to mistake and it's going to grab something that's similar. But if you feed your body on a daily basis, 
especially trace minerals. I'm telling you, as a practitioner, you're down to your papa nose amalgams out doing all kinds of creepy stuff to people, okay? You really at least should do trace minerals, okay? And one of the best ones is really Somaplex 21, okay? You can get that from Marco Pharma. And also, the key elements as far as health and wellness, anti-cancer, uh, chel health-supporting chelation, uh, Krebs cycle, et cetera, are these four right here. Zinc, immune stimulator, right? Molybendum, selenium. I can't stress the importance of selenium in a system. It's really a beautiful anti-cancer. It helps with detoxification. And of course, magnesium. Magnesium is the hardest damn thing to get in, but this trace mineral formula works extremely well. So the point is, is that with all this, is that we take all these beautiful precautions, you're in an incredible organization here, but there are things you have to do from the inside out. No matter how cool we are, we still get this crap poured on us. We still breathe it. Once you take it off and break the room down, it's still floating around the damn room. And we're absorbing it to whatever degree. But if you do these things, this will only help you, help you. So the point is really nurture, nurture your gut and it will give you longevity, happiness, et cetera. Now, probiotics, and I love talking about probiotics. There's a whole kind of science associated with it. But simple, you know, just remember that mantra, weed, feed, and seed. Weed, feed, and When you're taking probiotics every day and changing those around too, what happens is you're stimulating the, that immune system we saw lining the gut. You're putting fresh bacteria in there. There's a whole thing called spatial exclusion. This will, you're kindly coating that small intestine, that large intestine with these bacteria. Now you look at your, your probiotics, you'll see lactobacillus acidophilus. Okay, some of the tips are lactobacillus acidophilus is for the what? The small intestine. Those are designed for small intestine. Acidophilus, okay, lactobacillus, it produces lactic acid. And it has to be human strain. Don't go buy dog probiotic or cow. Remember, somebody bought horse and they were eating hay. It's just out of control. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. Human strain, and of course, it has to be a good probiotic that has the capacity to attach to the epithelium. If probiotics, the bacteria doesn't attach to the epithelium, it will not work. It will just go, out you go. The bifidum, bifidum part, is the second type of bacteria you'll see in your typical probiotic. That's for your large intestine, okay? Bacteria bifidum is for the large intestine. Once again, it has a human strain and capability. And also what you see with probiotics is FOS, fructoogliosaccharide. Say that three times, you'll hurt yourself, okay? And that's fertilizer. That's chicory extract, et cetera. It's non-digestible sugar. And of course, you're seeing today, I take prebiotics. What the hell is that? Okay, it's non-digestible, basically sugars. So it's chicory extract, et cetera. And what it is, it adds a lot of fiber to your diet, but you're putting fertilizer basically in your gut. Because the bacteria can eat that. They're having a blast. Ooh, lots of food here, man. Okay, so prebiotics or FOS, it's really fertilizer, and you'll see that typically on your probiotics. Now, our luck has been with uh, HMF Forte, which is the one we use that in an oral cavity and through the gut, a couple of capsules a day. You can take it with food. Some people, they take it away from food, but the study has shown the best take it with some food so it gets through that acid safe matter. And also, a wonderful series. For years, I've, I've done work with Claire Labs, Claire uh, Claire.com, a wonderful variety of different probiotics. So good supplements, get those sulfur-based type of uh, uh, support in there. Get the trace minerals in your gut and nurture your GI crack. Your, your GI crack. I guess it ends in a crack, doesn't it? Oh, I think my stomach's bothering me right now. Must have been that taco. <laughs> so has been them beans or something. Well, that's for later. Anyhow, so the Trinity Wellness, it's a simple thing that kind of came up years ago. Hydration, okay, good clean water. Talked about that a little bit yesterday. Filter your damn water. Because the trihalomethanes and chlorine will kill you. That's for sure. Probiotics, 
enzymes to help the digestive process. And there are beautiful different enzyme systems out there for digestion, for anti-inflammatories. It's amazing, that world of enzymes that you can incorporate for yourself and your patients, okay? And of course, supplemented with decent food, vitamins, minerals, and of course, essential fatty acids. And it's also important to get good oils in your system, like coconut oil, sunflower oil, good olive, clean olive oil. It's important to get good fats in your system, okay, that are not toxic, not hydrogenated, because those fats are incorporated and they make up your what? Cell membranes, okay? And remember, cell membranes are not a static thing. They're oscillating, they're constantly moving. There's a resonance to cell membranes, okay? They're constantly moving, there's incredible vitality there. And that's why it's so important that those phospholipids come from a clean source, so that allows for that resonance to go on. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you. <laughs> Anyhow, good oil! And may the poop be with you. <laughs> <laughs>